Hello and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting, mostly knitting, <laughs> and the other things I get up to here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. How are you? It's been a while. Uh, I took um, a little time off this August, um, a little more time than I thought I would, um, mostly because I got a summer cold. Wah, wah. <laughs> anyway, let me catch you up. The last time we talked, I think was at the end of July, um, and we had been very busy with soccer. Uh, August has been busy with other fun things. Um, my family and I went to Heritage Days, which is a festival that happens in Edmonton every summer on August long weekend, which is the first weekend in August. It happens in a big park, kind of in the middle of the city, where um, different cultural groups come together to showcase uh, their music, their dance, their culture, their, their national dress, their customs. Uh, and more importantly, their food. Um, it's one of our favorite festivals and we go every year to celebrate mostly meat on a stick, uh, different forms of baklava, desserts of any kind. Um, but we, we don't restrict ourselves to that. We'll eat just about anything. And every year we try something new. We have some favorites that we like to get every year. Um, we have some people that we like to visit in their pavilions because we have friends um, who share their cultures. And so um, it's usually a really good time. And we went this year, uh, just three of us, um, my husband, myself, and my younger daughter. And we enjoyed a lot of really great food. Um, so that was the first weekend in August. Then um, the next weekend in August in Edmonton is Folk Fest. Folk Fest is a big outdoor music festival that happens every year. It happens on um, a ski hill. Uh, in the summer. So they set up a huge stage at the bottom of the ski hill and then everybody sets up tarps um, on the ski hill to sit and watch the audience. It's, or the musical performers. It was great. My husband and I went Thursday. On Thursdays, it's just the, um, the main stage, but, and Friday, it's just the main stage. Saturday and Sunday, there are small stages set up all over the place and there are hundreds of acts that come. This year was a big year. They had a huge lineup because uh, we'd had a couple years off for COVID. Um, so I think it came back with a bang. My husband and I went on Thursday evening with some friends and we saw Kaleo and Daniel Ratliff and the Night Sweats. Both acts were great and we had an amazing time. Uh, so that was the beginning of August and then we were off on vacation. My family and I went to Los Angeles for a week. So we spent a few days at Disneyland, a few very busy and hot days at Disneyland, um, getting the most of our time there, riding all the rides. Uh, it was a lot different this time because my daughters are now teenagers. The last time they were at Disneyland, they were maybe 10 and 8-ish. So uh, the things that they're interested in this time are very different. They don't want to meet the princesses and go on the slow rides. <laughs> they just want to bypass all of those and hit the roller coasters. So we spent a lot of time on roller coasters or waiting for our daughters to finish riding roller coasters. Um, they had a great time. So three fun packed days at Disney. And then we moved over to Santa Monica where we hung out by the beach and relaxed for a few days before coming home. Unfortunately, when I got home, I had a summer cold. So I spent a lot of my next week off uh, just kind of taking it easy, which is not a bad thing. My husband had huge house plans. Every day he had two or three um, contractors or consults or people coming over for the gutters or the um, concrete or the windows or a plumber or an electrician. So we had lots of people coming and going, but mostly I just took it easy and rested, which was actually much needed. But here I am back at work and back podcasting with you. And I'm really glad to be here. Um, there's a few things going on uh, here at Jolene that's a lot. Um, not the least of which is uh, it's almost my two year anniversary. So I encourage you to come back for next episode where we're going to be um, celebrating, celebrating two years of Jolene It's a Lot and my 50th episode and just a lot of other fun things. So come on back next time. This time I have some surprises for you too. Um, as you may know, I am teaching at the Prairie Fiber Festival this year. Prairie Fiber Festival is a great local to me festival that happens in Lacombe, Alberta. Lacombe is a great little town located between Edmonton and Red Deer. 
if you're familiar with Alberta geography, and if you're in the area, um, there are many classes being offered. And I would love for you to sign up for my class on Afterthought Heels. Um, there's still some spaces left, a couple spots. So if you're interested in joining me for uh, a class where we are going to be hands-on, cutting our knitting, measuring, putting in the heel right where you want it, and trying out some or offering you some different heel options, um, depending on what your interests are. So uh, I would encourage you, if you have uh, a fear of cutting your knitting, or if you have an interest in learning how, join me for my Afterthought Knitting class. It's happening on September 17th, which is a Saturday in Lacombe, Alberta, at the Prairie Fiber Festival. And while you're there, you can shop all of the many, many local vendors. Um, I look forward to seeing Polka Dot Creek and Shelley's Artistry, who are a couple of my go-tos every time I'm there. Also Sassy Strings, Fibers, some beautiful yarn. Last year I stocked up. Um, and so there's going to be lots of local makers that you should check out um, if you're in town for classes or yarn. Um, another thing that we're doing in conjunction with the Prairie Fiber Festival is a little knit along. A few years ago, I came up with a pattern called the All Sorts Scarf. I'm going to pop a picture of it right here. Uh, and it's a scarf that uses up odds and ends of yarn. So the, the idea is that it's sort of based on all sorts candy and uh, you can use little odds and ends of yarn that you may have lying around from leftover from projects or maybe from um, advent calendars. It uses 24 um, 10 gram minis. Now each stripe uses less than a 10 gram and uh, you can see we have some different textures going on. It's a bias knit scarf. Starts out with some garter stitch. There's lots of lovely stockinette, knit on the bias. There's a few little uh, lacy details. So there's this pattern, which is a sort of um, twisted lacy pattern. Lots of pleasant stockinette mixed with some other little uh, eyelet patterns or lace. And so um, the pattern walks you through each of these sections one by one. And I used many, many <laughs> different minis that I had lying around. Mine is done sort of in a mm, purples and grays sort of um, tonal color way, but you could use whatever colors you like. This one is a Stephen Gray, and, or Stephen West inspired colorway done by um, Ancient Arts uh, because Stephen West loves all the colors. So I popped that in there and then it's finished off with a couple of little tassels. This is a very long scarf um, that would suit just about anyone. And I was thinking maybe it might be fun for us to do a knit along in October after um, some of the yarny festivals have happened and we might be hanging around with some yarn left over. Um, so this is the All Sorts scarf. I'm gonna put the name here and I'm gonna link to my pattern in the show notes below. It takes, um, as I said, about 24 10 gram balls of yarn, uh, more or less. And you can use up whatever you have at home. The stripes can be longer or shorter, it's up to you. Um, but why don't we plan for a little knit along in October? For the Prairie Fiber Festival, I'm offering a 20% discount on the pattern. So the discount code that you can enter into Ravelry is PFF20 for Prairie Fiber Festival. 20% off. Um, if you're interested, start gathering up your little odds and ends. Um, I kind of plan this as something you can knit through Advent, but we can do it in October. And my plan is to just knit a section a day. It doesn't take that long. Each section is just a couple inches long. Often it's just stockinette or maybe an easy lace pattern. Um, so it might be fun for us to do together. Gather your yarns, plan for an October 1st cast on, and we will um, knit ourselves some all sorts. The, um, the discount code, I believe, is valid until the end of October. And again, it's PFF20 if you wanna join in in the uh, Prairie Fiber Festival All Sorts Knit Along. And if you're going to the Prairie Fiber Festival and you pick up some minis, you can knit them into your scarf as well. I have to start collecting 
some odds and ends. Um, this is a fingering weight scarf. You could of course knit this in whatever weight you want. Um, and you could probably mix weights. I don't know that it would make that much of a difference, especially if you were using fingering in sport or whatever you have lying around. So I have to check my stash. I know I'm gonna have some leftovers from some projects I'm working on right now. So I'm gonna start pulling everything together and getting ready for knit along starting in October. I have one finished object to share with you today and it is the Arna Ornata blouse. Now it's too hot <laughs> to wear this today. We're having a heat wave at the end of summer here in Edmonton. So maybe I'll post some pictures of uh, this finished object uh, up here and at the end of the show. But here is my our Ornata sweater. Look at these sleeves. I'm really, really happy with my color choices. I think that this is something that I could wear a lot, especially with jeans um, in the winter. I love, love the sleeves and how the neckline is a very sort of peasanty, um, peasant blouse kind of inspired look. The sheen of the yarn is lovely. I used um, Lillian Pine in their rose sock yarn, which has a little bit of cashmere in it, uh, and it's got a beautiful shine and a lovely drape. But I think that the contrast of the deep sort of midnighty blues with the pale gray is just lovely, and I really enjoyed every minute of knitting it. I used um, a 12-inch circular needle on the sleeves. I find that 12-inch circular needles allow me to just knit round and round and round, particularly in color work sleeves. Um, without getting jogs or ladders from using DPNs. I also prefer a shorter needle, like a 12 inch to Magic Loop, because I'm, I'm not fussing with pulling um, the needle through. I have used Magic Loop and it's okay, but it's not my, my go-to. If it is yours, that's fabulous. I'm all for knitting in the way that you enjoy the most and what makes you the most comfortable and what gets you the best results. For me, um, Magic Loop I find a little fuddly, but I know some people um, love it and that's fabulous. Um, so this is the Ornata blouse. It's a pattern by Teti Lutzak, I believe. She's coming out with tons of patterns this summer. And it's all finished. I'm really happy with it. And I'm gonna show you some pictures because I can't be bothered to wear it right now. It is too hot. Um, on that note, I am wearing a hand knit. It is an outline tank. This is a tank uh, designed by Jesse Made Designs. I knit it in some Kelborn Yarns Mojave, which is a cotton linen blend that I love. I have knit two tanks out of this yarn and a t-shirt because I love it. Um, and that is all I have for finished objects, but I have been knitting and I have been knitting on a number of different things. The first thing I'll show you is, I guess, a half fit a hoe, a half object. Um, I started some socks just to have something small um, on the needles, and these are for my older daughter. She likes crew socks these days, and she also likes likes socks with a bit of arch support. So I thought I would give it a try. These are my first attempt, and uh, they do need some tweaks to be her like sort of ideal socks. But I'll show you what I've done. Um, I cast on, this is just using some leftover sassy strings yarn that I used for many things. I've used this yarn for, I think, a hat. Uh, I used it in a Stephen West shawl last year. Um, I think this is their Frostbite colorway. And I just did a uh, two by two ribbed leg for about four inches. Then I stuck in a heel and went to the foot. And uh, once I was about maybe a half an inch past the gusset decreases, I started this um, arch support section. And really all it is is a um, like knit one, slip one all the way around and then knit around and then knit one, slip one and then knit around. And it's very much like um, a slip stitch heel. You can see it looks just the same. Um, and that is just to pr provide a section in the sock around about where your arch is that is um, less stretchy than the rest of the socks. You can see this part towards the toe is quite stretchy 
and this arch support section is slightly less so. It's also kind of gushier. Now, the things I learned from knitting this sock are that she would like the leg to be just a little bit longer, so that's okay. The next time I knit some socks, I'll try that. And also, she finds that the arch support section, which is right here, uh, could be closer to her heel. So the next time, I think what I would do is I would um, knit the gusset decreases and then immediately start this sort of um, less stretchy section for her arch. But otherwise, I think they turned out pretty well. I like the colors. I think they're, I think they're a fun pair of socks. So I'm finishing up, not finishing, I'm working on the second one as and when I have time. And I've done this much of the ribbing. Again, this is a work in project and it's sort of a mm, prototype sock. Um, we're working on figuring out exactly how she would like them. And I may be knitting up a pair for my other daughter as well and myself, I think I would like some too. Um, so I'll let you know how that goes. It's just something I'm playing with a little bit um, based on some other pro um, patterns that I've seen on uh, Ravelry and sort of around, I'm sort of mishmashing different pieces of different patterns together to try and find a cute little crew sock that my daughters might like. So that's still a work in progress, but I'll let you know how that gets on. And I have two sweaters on the needles. Now this is very strange for me. I'm usually quite a monogamous, monogamous-ish knitter. Um, mostly because I like to have one larger project and one smaller project on the go. I find that having two projects is about as much as I really have time to work on. So um, right now my socks have not been getting a lot of attention because I've been working on some other things. The first thing that I have been working on is my Easy V pullover. And uh, I don't know that you've seen this. I think probably you've seen um, the yarns, but you haven't seen how much I've done. <laughs> so I cast this on shortly after I finished my Ornata blouse. I wanted something to work on while I was waiting for um, a knit -along to, another knit along to start, which I will get to. Um, so I started the Easy V pullover and uh, I've made some progress. <laughs> um, I just love how these colors have turned out. I chose two skeins of dyed in the wool yarn, which is a sport weight, and one skein of Yarn Hero that I had picked up in Calgary in the spring, if you remember. And then I'm using a dyed in the skein um, yarn, which is the same base as dyed in the wool, um, but dyed in, not by the Spin Cycle Sisters, but instead by Magpie Fibers. And so this, um, my main color is called Bougie Beaver. Yes, it is. Um, the first color that I used in Dyed in the Wool is called Nostalgia. That moves into Mississippi Marsala. The Yarn Hero color is called Canyon. And then they repeat themselves and we're back to the Bougie Beaver. This uh, yoke went so quickly because I just loved knitting it. The yarns have a really interesting texture and the marled nature and the color shifting of both of the kinds of yarns that I used in the yoke just made it fly by. And then, and then I knit the body. I did use helical knitting to try and avoid any pooling. And I think that this was very successful. I knit the body just a little bit longer than the pattern suggested um, because I'm not super into really cropped sweaters. And then I started the sleeve and I have knit through the color work and I'm almost done the ribbing. So I've made great progress with this sweater. Um, if you're familiar with this pattern, you'll know that it was written for worsted weight yarns. So it was written to be used uh, with Spin Cycle's Dream State, which is a worsted weight yarn, and then a, a worsted weight main color. I, um, I just prefer sport weight sweaters, sport weight to DK. I find that um, for me personally, worsted weight sweaters are just a bit too heavy. Um, so I did a little math, um, so that I could use a sport weight yarn. Um, and let me tell you how I sort of figured that out so that if you wanted to do this for yourself, you could give it a try to figure out what size I should knit or how I should knit this sweater with, uh, 
a sport weight yarn instead of a worsted weight yarn. I took my gauge on sport weight yarn, which is um, about 23 stitches per four inches or 5.75 stitches per inch. Then I figured out what size of sweater I wanted to make for myself. So I wanted to have about a 43 inch sweater. I don't like sweaters that are too um, oversized or with too much positive ease. So I was aiming for about 43 inches. Um, so I took 5.75 stitches per inch and I multiplied that by 43 inches to get the number of body stitches I was aiming for for this sweater. Um, my number that I came up with was about 247 stitches. Then I looked at the pattern itself and I skipped ahead to the portion where you separate the yoke, the sleeves from the body so that I could see what size was about what I wanted in terms of stitch, stitch number. So I was looking for a number similar to 447. The pattern has um, a size that is uses 240 body stitches and a size that uses 260 body stitches. So I chose the slightly larger one, knowing that my gauge may be a little off. And if anything, it was probably going to be a little bit, fit a little smaller than expected. My dog is very excited and intrigued with what I'm saying. Um, so I chose the 260 stitch size. So then when I went back through the pattern, I chose all of the stitch numbers that corresponded to that size. I think it's the fifth size. Um, and then when I was, when there was directions that said knit, um, for example, the yoke depth to this uh, many inches, I chose the size that was um, appropriate for the 43 inch bust. So I sort of, um, chose the stitch count from the larger size. I chose the stitch count from the larger size and the uh, length from the uh, actual finished size that I want to have. So that's how I figured out my uh, numbers, my stitches, the numbers I was gonna follow for this pattern. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I have tried on the sweater uh, it and it fits really nicely. I think that um, after I block it, everything will just sort of smooth out a bit, but the fit is, is quite good actually at the moment. And the sleeves, uh, as you can see, will be a little bit on the long side, but because they sort of have a balloony sleeve, I wanted them to have enough uh, fabric so that they would be, they would have some volume. So I'm pulling it out right now, but when I actually wear it, it won't be quite so puffed up. And yeah, I just, I love the way that the colors worked out on this sleeve. The next sleeve I know will be very different because of just where um, the yarn is in terms of its shifting and I'm fine with that. I'm kind of excited to see how it ends up. But I'm really happy with my color choices and I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna have a finished sweater in the not too distant future. So look forward to seeing this one finished. It's the Easy V Pullover. It's a pattern by Boyland Knitworks. It's very popular right now. Um, and you know what? It's actually quite an easy project in terms of the color work. So if you were sort of newer to color work, this would be a great way to jump in. Again, I used a 12 inch circular on the sleeves for this color work. Um, I think it just gives me a pretty good tension in the round and I find that I, I'm not stopping constantly to um, start a new DPN or pull my needle through so it, I think I was quite successful in getting a pretty good tension on that sleeve. I have just maybe a half an inch left to go in ribbing and then I'll start the next sleeve. So I look forward to having this one finished for um, yarn festival season. Um, but one yarn festival sweater, arguably two, if you count the Ornata, um, is not enough. When uh, this summer, um, 
Andrea Mowry came out with a new Rhinebeck sweater. She does this every year, comes out with a new sweater pattern in July um, with the intention of having a big knit along and everyone can knit a sweater for fall festival season. Um, often people wear this sweater to Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck uh, is not in the cards for me this year, um, but I would love to go one year. Um, it's in the plans, but but not right now. Uh, but having said that, I am going to some yarn festivals this year. I'm going to the Prairie Yarn Festival, uh, or sorry, the Prairie Fiber Festival. I am going to be at Knit City in Vancouver in September. And uh, there's very real possibility that I may be at the Edmonton Fiber Frolic uh, this year in November. So a girl needs some sweaters. So I decided to cast on the latest Andrew Mowry sweater. It's called the Elkin Glow. I'll show you a picture right here. Uh, and they were hosting a knit along starting on August 22nd. So my thinking with the Easy Bee was I'll start the sweater, I'll knit on it until um, the sweater knit along starts for the Alpen Glow. And then, um, and then I'll start that one. Um, seemed reasonable, right? <laughs> Sometimes my knitting um, ambition gets ahead of me. But anyway, um, I have made great progress with the Easy V and I only have really only one sleeve left. So I'm hoping that that will be finished soon so I can work a little bit more on my Alpen Glow. Um, now Alpen Glow is a really interesting sweater. And again, I'll just pop some pictures up here. It uses um, color work. And it also uses mosaic knitting. So I have um, cast on the sweater. The way that this pattern works, you cast on um, this, the neckline, um, but you, do, you knit the ribbing later. So you cast on and you start the yoke right away and you knit the yoke and then the body and then you come back and knit some ribbing at the top. Uh, it's your choice if you wanna knit the ribbing plain or fold it over. Um, I guess I'm still sort of deciding what I want to do, but I'll show you where I'm at um, and what I'm doing. I kind of have a lot of things on the go. So I'm hoping that this sweater, uh, I can actually show you what's happening. So I cast on uh, up here and I'm using, uh, my first color yarn is a Biche et Bouche uh, Lambs Wool. I actually have the ball right here. Biche et Bouche Le Petit Lambs Wool. Um, it is 100% lamb's wool, made in the UK, I believe most of the yarn is from Scotland. Yes, it is. Pure lamb's wool from Scotland. Um, it's a really, really lovely yarn. It's my first time using it. Um, it's, I would say, a light sport to fingering weight. It's quite a loosely spun woolen spun, I believe. I will correct myself if I'm wrong. Um, it is woolen spun. Sometimes I get things right. Um, it's a woolen spun yarn, which means that um, there's a lot of air in in the yarn. It's not super tightly spun. And um, it's giving me a really light and what I think will be a drapey fabric. So I've started with this soft, dark gray color. Uh, and then you move into the color work uh, of the sweater. So I used um, Odang by Farmer's Daughter. Odang is a alpaca, Surrey alpaca silk blend. And I use that held double. This is the Highwayman colorway. And then I go uh, to the main color of the sweater, which again is Biche et Bouche, this very same yarn. Oops, this very same yarn in the uh, soft or light gray color. This is a yarn I picked up when I was at Stash in uh, the spring with my daughter. Um, I didn't really have any intention for what I wanted to use it for, but I thought I'll buy it. A sweater will come up and indeed it did. So um, this light gray is also beautiful. <coughs> and then the uh, rest of the color work of the sweater is knit in uh, dyed in the wool. I'm having a hard time showing you this. Dyed in the wool um, by Spin Cycle. And I'm using the Leith colorway. The Leaf colorway is a very, um, let me see if I can find a skein of it. It's very sort of deep, deep greens with some lighter green marling. Um, and as you can see, it varies throughout the skein. And you'll see that through my sweater. So 
So I knit the whole yoke um, pattern, which is um, some lovely zigzags and some, some one by one sort of color work. Uh, and then after that comes the mosaic knitting of the body. And the directions for um, the pattern indicate that you start the mosaic knitting and knit it to the depth that you want the yoke to be before se separating for sleeves and body. The neckline for this sweater is knit at the end, but I decided I would pick up those stitches and knit the neckline now so I'd have a better sense of where to divide for the sleeves and the body so that I made sure that I had enough um, depth in the yoke. Um, so I have just this morning <laughs> picked up the stitches at the very beginning and started just a couple rounds of ribbing that maybe you can see. So that's where I am at this sweater. I'm sort of burning the candle at both ends, <laughs> um, knitting the sweater at both ends. I have um, just started the ribbing and I'm gonna knit that up. And then once I've completed the neckline, which is up here, I'm going to, I think, either try it on. I think that might be the best way to go. Um, so I'll probably put some of these stitches on one of my barber cords, which is a, a silicone co cord, which you can pull through your knitting to put your stitches on hold so that you can try things on and that they're not, your stitches aren't all bunched up on the needle. So I think that once I finish the neckline, I will try it on to see uh, if I like the depth where it's at or if I wanna add some more depth before moving on with the body and separating for sleeves. So that's where I'm at. I have uh, an almost finished sweater. I have another sweater on the go and um, purposely, I think they're very different colors, um, different color families, and I think that that will give me um, a lot of options for um, dressing this fall, uh, but I'm looking forward to them both being done. I think that they will be really wearable and cozy sweaters. What have you been knitting this fall? Are you knitting sweaters for yarn festivals? I hope so. I love the excitement of um, picking sweaters to knit and wear uh, when we're surrounded by all of our fellow knitters and we can all appreciate each other's work and get excited about colorways and uh, the yarn we've chosen and the colors we like. Um, I just love this time of year. I just think it's exciting to be um, all knitting together with the purpose of sharing what we've done with people who we know will appreciate it. So if you are going to be at some yarn festivals this fall, um, I hope you're wearing hand knits. If you're gonna be at the Prairie Fiber Festival, I hope you'll join me for my class in Afterthought Heels. Um, or if I see you around, please come and say hi. Um, I would love to meet you and to hear what you're knitting. If you're gonna be at Knit City, same goes. Um, I'm gonna be for sure shopping a lot. <laughs> but um, if you see me, please come and introduce yourself. I would love to meet you. And I hope that um, you're busily knitting for yarn festival season just like I am. I uh, do have plans today though. I can't knit all day. My mom's stopping by. She's bringing me um, a whole bunch of stuff from her garden. Uh, cucumbers, carrots, beets, potatoes. Uh, my mom is an amazing gardener and she got that from her mom, uh, but I did not. I, I'm not really a gardener. I, uh, it just, it's just not something that interests me. Um, I'd rather be knitting. But I hope if you're a gardener, you're enjoying the fruits of your garden. I have big plans to make some chocolate zucchini loaf this afternoon, possibly followed by some chocolate zucchini scones, uh, depending on how far I get with this massive zucchini I picked up at the farmer's market. Um, I also have some banana seeds up and some blueberries. So there's gonna be lots of baking this weekend. Um, here at Jolene Knits a lot. And uh, I hope that you are able to enjoy some of the fruits of your garden. And if it's not your garden, maybe it's someone else's. Um, but I, I like this time of year for all of the amazing food and produce that we can have um, fresh from gardens. So I hope you're knitting. I hope you're enjoying um, all of the amazing harvest that uh, is to offer in your area. And I hope that in the next couple of weeks, you find time to do the things that you like to do. I have a couple of sweaters to knit, so I am going to be knitting a lot. I'll see you soon. Take care.